Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and on today's Real Life Friday video, we're finishing this. Now, if you haven't watched Wednesday's video where we started this project, pause this right now, go over, watch Wednesdays, and then come back and pick up on this because we did a lot of stuff to this china cabinet that I purchased from, I call it Let Go, but I think they changed the name. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I purchased a china cabinet a long time ago when I first moved into this house and it wasn't pretty. It's been sitting here in the same state for the last, you know, two and a half years or however long I've lived in this house. So, you know, I've been into, I like redoing furniture and I stumbled across this channel. Katja is the furniture designer's name and she is amazing. She does these amazing glow ups with her furniture. She uses different paint techniques. She uses decals and gold gilding and decoupage papers and she turns these furniture pieces into something that is like museum quality. So that's what I started to do here. We had done all of the paint. I did put a light primer coat on it and then I used like a tealy blue, did the whole thing in tealy blue. And then I came back and did orange over the top. And then the piece de resistance, which I love, is I went in with like this violety hot pinky color into all the grooves. I slapped it on and then I got a wet rag and wiped it off. So now it's just in the groove. So it's like gives off this really cool antique vibe but with a color. So today we are going to put some decals, which I've never done before and I'm super, super nervous about it, but I ordered the decals online and they're here and we're ready to get to work. We're gonna finish this puppy up on this Real Life Friday video. So I ordered this online from, I feel like I got it from Etsy, like an Etsy shop. I don't remember, but they sure did take it. So I ordered quite a bit, three to be exact. Each one of these little tubes comes with four pieces of the Peacock transfer. Oh, and actually this transfer is from Dixie Belle. I tried to go onto the Dixie Bell website. Number one, it was more expensive. Number two, they only had two rolls left. I think this design is being discontinued. So yeah, I tried to get it straight from the source, but they didn't have enough. So I got it from an Etsy shop. I know that I wanna do like how they butted up all of the big pieces and made like a giant thing. I know I wanna do that in the back inside, which I think we'll start first because it's a flat surface. I feel like that might be the easiest. You would think, oh, just do one on the inside and then do one on the front. Well, I didn't wanna do that. I wanted it to wrap the corner. So I'm gonna use four parts on the inside and then I wanna use four parts on this corner and four parts on this corner. That's why I got three. This is from A Fresh Coat of Fabulous. That's it, I don't even remember. I wanna say they were like $18 a piece. I could be totally wrong, I don't remember. Maybe they were like $15 each. I don't really know, it doesn't really matter. They're here and I'm gonna use them. So these are decal, transfer decals. Is that what they call them? I've never used these ever in my life. I've only just watched Katja use them. To me, it doesn't seem that hard, so Let's get to figuring out where we're gonna put it. So I think our first step is finding center up and down and center crosswise so that I could, you know, line everything up. So measuring tape, 38 and a quarter. Of course it's 38 and a quarter. So what's half of 38? 19? 19. I just made the ever so slight, very, 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 very tiny pencil mark right there. And now we'll go from top inside down, 41, half of 41, 20 and a half, and one little line right there. Now that I know where my center center is, now we can unwrap these and see what they look like. Ooh, okay. So inside we have a little wooden stick, which I'm gathering 
and it's, I think it's plastic. It looked wooden at first, but it just has a wooden texture. And then, oh, what's this? <gasps> oh my God, it's beautiful. Okay, so there are four individual sheets and they're numbered one, two, three, four. Transfers are sensitive to pressure and release when you rub them. Transfers can be layered, distressed, or sealed. Okay, works on many different surfaces, including furniture, wood, glass, mirrors, and more. Oh, these are beautiful. I'm so excited. What I want to use is this big portion. So I think I'm going to cut this around here so that I don't waste any of these because I might want to do some of the little ones like, you know, flourishes, if you will. So I'm going to trim these up and then we're going to lay them out and then we're going to rub them on. Okay, so I cut my transfers. They're all right here. I mapped it out on the floor so I know which ones go where. I have my tape. I'm gonna put this one first, and this center corner here, inside corner, needs to go right there. I'm gonna rip off some tape so we are prepared to tape. Now we're supposed to peel off the white protective backing away from the clear sheet. So now... I'm nervous! I literally had to go turn down my air a couple clicks because it's cool in my house, but I, I started sweating because I'm so nervous. Oh wait, how do you know if it's straight? Should I go get a level? Because we can't have it be like... I don't want to draw a straight line across here because I don't want the pencil showing through. I'll bring in a couple of things, maybe helpful. Okay, so I got a level and then I got this L rulery thing. As I was getting it, I was just thinking about it. I'm like, ooh, first time you're not eyeballing it. Oh my God, did I get it level? That seems level. Do we just go for it? Let me take down one more corner and then re-level it again. No, I don't know what made me think that was level. It's so hard to tell. Okay, so I lied. I took it down and then I ended up putting tiny little baby tick marks horizontally. I just did three and then vertically so that I could line this up better because the level situation was not situationing. So now I feel a little bit better about it. All right, so that should be good there. And then let's line up this bottom. Yeah, I like it. Okay. We've got one. Do you think I should tape up the second one too? Or just do one at a time, huh? One at a time. All right, I manned with my rubbing stick. So it, it, last night I was like, okay, painting. If it doesn't turn out the way you like it, just paint over it. If I mess this up or it doesn't turn out the way I like it, then what do I do? How do you get it off? I don't know. Do I just ruin the whole thing? I, let's not think about it. Let's just start rubbing. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna rub. I'm just gonna rub, 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 rub. Probably could rub more with the whole thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, much better. I'm using the whole long edge. And then I know when Katja does it, she rubs it and then she slowly starts to peel it away. And if she sees anything that's not exactly stuck, she lays it right back down and then rubs it some more. So I'm gonna use her method when removing, but I'm gonna spend a little minute to make sure it's all really nice and rubbed on. I'm very excited for the reveal, very excited. Okay, I feel like I rubbed the shit out of it. So let's see. <sighs> no, it's literally not sticking. What is happening? How much pressure do you need to put? Did it not say sensitive? Apply, gently pull back the clear. Wait, is there another sheet? Is there another sheet under this? If I just fuck this one up, I'm gonna be pissed. Is there another sheet? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So if you take off the protective white, is there another? No, I mean, I can't feel another sheet. Ugh. It like did not stick in the slightest. And if we have to do this forever, I better go turn down my air conditioning even more. I'm working up a sweat. Okay, I'm sure you can hear how hard I'm rubbing. Okay, a little bit of it's on there, but like that's not stuck, I can tell for sure. I'm gonna be at this rubbing this for fuck ever. All right, let me rub it some more. 
Okay, it's no joke how hard I've been rubbing. I'm rubbing the plastic like off of this and I'm pressing so hard I bent it. But you can see when you have it rubbed on, when it's actually adhered, you can see it kind of come away. All right, that looks good. That doesn't right here. Get this edge down. Man, when Kasha does this, she just goes boop, 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 and she does it and it's perfect and beautiful. I'm so nervous. I don't want to go super fast, but that looks cool. Jiminy Christmas. Seriously. <sighs> There's got to be an easier way. I thought I rubbed it so good. Apparently not. <sighs> Clearly, I'm going to be at this for a little minute. So if I can ever get it off, I'll show you. Okay, I should have been timing myself, but if the sweat dripping off of me is any indication of how much rubbing I've been doing to this, and this is still my first one, it should kind of tell you how long I've been doing it. The more you get stuck on, the easier it is to get the remainder stuck on. The best way to explain it is, be prepared to just be rubbing the crap out of it. Now, you do have to be careful. I noticed some of like the little wispies weren't laying down or weren't stuck. And so then when I went to go lay it back down and rub them, they kind of wrinkled over themselves, which isn't that huge of a deal because it's a bunch of these little wispy lines right here. But yeah, I don't want wrinkles in it. So yeah, still working. But what I mean is when you get it going, you'll hear this plastic part kind of come away from the decal and then this plastic part will turn foggy because it's not adhered to the decal. So you know it's stuck down. And my fingers are cramping too. Oh, oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. Oh, oh, I did it, finally. Oh my Lord, love a duck. It's there, it's there. Now I gotta do three more. I need to go get some ice water. Okay, I feel like I've been at it for an hour and I finally got it all done and it looks beautiful. Tool switch up. I think the stick, the plastic stick that they provide is too like rounded. So I went and got, um, this is from Pampered Chef. It's the stone, the baking stone scraper. It's thinner and it's firm like the one that they gave us, but it's just thinner, it's kind of more sharp. So I found that this was way better than this. When I went to grab this, putting on these two went super duper duper fast. So I'm gonna use this for the rest of them. Now, I'm gonna stop on the inside right now. The decals do come with like these little bits of flare, and I thought it might be fun to put flare, but I wanna do the drawers first and see if they go any easier because the drawers are solid wood. This is like a, you know, it's not like cardboard, like from Ikea, you know, that little cardboard. It is wood, but it is, you know, thin wood. I don't know. I don't know why I'm theorizing that maybe it will be easier to do on solid wood. I don't see why it would. I'm just thinking, hopefully. Well, and too, I wanna to move down to the doors so I can see the doors. I think this looks amazing. I do wanna add some flair because once these are closed, I mean, it cuts off a lot of the design. So yeah, that's what I wanna do there. But now I'm gonna move on to the doors on the bottom. I hope it's not hard. Okay, so basically what I wanna do for the doors is I opened up another tube. So that design that we have in the center top, I want it to be on the corner and on this corner. And I think I'm just going to use the top edge here and align my numbers one and two up and then I can align three and four based off of those. I should probably cut off this edge so I can butt it right up against. So. Dilemma. I want it to be butted up to the edge of the door, but this hinges in the way. Also too, what's gonna be a pain in the ass is the ins and outs of this door. Now I'm not gonna curve the design in. I'm only gonna rub the flat surfaces. So I don't know how that's gonna work. I honestly don't know how that's gonna work. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. This is gonna be a get scene game. Do you see what I'm dealing with here? Okay, that kind of works. 
I can bend the plastic like up against the hinge. This is gonna be iffy. I don't know, I don't know if this is gonna work how I plan it. Cause there's so many lumps and bumps, I just don't know. I don't even know how it's gonna look. Part of me feels like I probably need to get all of them on because if I do this and then try to remove it, how will I know where to line it up? You know what I'm trying to say? Okay, so I have my one and two on. The thing I just don't know about is where all the little divots are. When I scratch this down and go to remove it, what's gonna happen to the parts that aren't connected? This is where I could ruin the whole thing. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna have to go for it. So like on all the flat surfaces, I just really don't know what's gonna happen in the gaps. Like I'm almost wondering, Ooh, should I get a razor blade? So you know, when I start peeling this up, anywhere where there's a gap, I could razor blade it. In my head, it works, you know. You know how that goes, but I can't be too certain. So yeah, I'm gonna go get a razor blade and then I'm gonna keep doing this and when I'm getting ready to peel, I'll show you guys. Fingers crossed. Okay, I'm not saying this is gonna turn out bad. I just have a feeling it's gonna turn out bad. I don't know, I could have, I don't know. We're just gonna have to see. I, I honestly have no clue how this is gonna go. You can tell right here, this is all loose, but I don't want any of that because that's open spot. I wish there was an easier way. And technically, what I should have done is gotten decoupage paper. Would have been much easier than this, but I really liked this peacock situation. Okay, so be prepared because this is going to be a disaster because it's like, Okay, this might work. It might work. It might not look as shitty as I think. Maybe I can make this work. It might just take me 80 million years. Now I think I can get my blade and like cut down the crack like this and remove it in little sections. Maybe that's the best way to do it. Like this, now that I've cut. Okay, okay, this might work. So see, now I'm only peeling off this one piece rather than trying to peel off the whole thing. Okay, but see, it's wrapping around and I don't know if I'll be able to get that off. It's wrapping inside of my crack. <laughs> so I wonder how easy that is to get off. And now I need to cut. I mean, technically, I guess I could go in with a little bit of paint if I can't get it scraped off where I don't want it to be. Ugh, never seen Katja have to deal with this. She probably plans out her designs a little bit better than I did. Okay, well, here's where we are. And I got a lot in places I don't want it. And I do think that before I start rubbing anything, I cut away as much of the indent pieces, cut those away first, then start rubbing. I'm digging what's happening. However, this whole section right here should not be here. I don't want that here. It's pretty sticky. So I'm going to be here until midnight. But now that I know what not to do, I mean, it's still gonna be bad on the other ones, but I don't think it'll be as bad. I'm gonna be here for a while, you guys, so go get a beverage, go get some popcorn. Maybe I'll have this cleaned up by the time you get back. We'll see. Okay, it's taking me a while, but I think I have mastered how to do this part of the project. Like, look at it. So I'm really pleased. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. The technique takes a while, but not nearly as long as this first section took me. Having to remove all of the parts that were stuck where I didn't want them to be stuck was a shit show. So my new technique, it does take a little bit of prep work, but in the end it goes so much smoother and you do not have a lot of decal to remove where you don't want it to be because it's very hard. Like right here, I had to scrape so much that it's a little bit more antiqued than I would like it. I might come in with some orange, but then also I feel like our waxing and all of our finishing treatment might cover up the multitude of sins that was made in this area here. Now that I've gotten it figured out, let me show you how to do it in case you wanna tackle something like this where you want gaps in your pattern. Now, there are some areas where I messed up a little bit, but you know what? The pattern is so patterny that no one will know unless they're like right up and go, oh, she scratched it right there, didn't she? No one will know. And you know what? And if someone is that close to the piece of furniture that you refinished your damn self, then you tell them 
to leave. So I moved to the other side. I was just noticing my area is a shit show. I should probably clean it up. There is shit everywhere. I can barely move, but I'm not going to. So I'm on my last pack of my Retro Peacock transfers. These transfers come with a lot of transfer. So I have all of these little whimsy pieces that I definitely wanna use in the inside back and then maybe I might use some on the top, but I also might not, it depends. There was a part of me when I finished this side, I was like, huh, maybe a little asymmetry will be nice and we just only do that one side, but I'm not going to. We're gonna open this up and we are going to do this side. So the key is don't rub anything down. Get one square in place where you want it before you rub anything. Get a blade and cut away all of the negative space where you don't want your decal to be. I did kind of in some places like get my blade too close to the actual furniture and there's like a little bit of like a shoomp mark but we're waxing it we're gonna do some final antiquing we're gonna cover up a multitude of sins but on this side we shouldn't have that many sins okay so I cut off all of the whimsy and I just have the pieces that I want to do here now I take them up where they need to go and it's mirroring this side I want to make sure that whatever is in this quadrant here is going to be the same here so you can see how this pattern this is going up this is this same thing this little leaf here is this so I'm mirroring in this corner what I did in this corner and I taped them up so I don't forget where they go you want to start with one area at a time I've also got to cut away this like salvage edge so I can get it up against the hinge don't take off your paper backing until you've cut away the parts that you cut away. It will stick to your scissors, it will stick to everything. Believe you me, it's a disaster. I'm gonna cut this away. Boy, my painter's tape is really holding up here. Once I cut this raw edge away, I am safe to take off the white backing because I don't need to cut anymore. I just need to lay it in place and then be able to see through to my negative space so I can razor blade that. Out. Okay, so I cut away my salvage edge and now I can take off my white paper backing. The decal itself does have a little bit of tack to it. It stays up like long enough for you to like get your tape and positioning in place and you can undo it and redo it again. Just don't let it fold onto itself. So what I've been doing is just using this top edge here as my guide and I've been using the edge of the door as my other guide. The hinge is what causes the problem. So I need to be able to cut away some of this so I can get that really close to the hinge. And I found that a sharp blade works the best. So it's very rudimentary. Sorry if my head's in the way, but I need to be able to see. Okay, once you have that part cut out, now you can definitely like move it into its exact where it needs to be. And when I think that's good, then I start slathering it in painter's tape everywhere, holding it in place. So painter's tape the shit out of it, and now I can see where I'm going to remove the parts of the decal that I don't want to get stuck anywhere. Just follow along as best you can in the grooves without going too deep because I don't want to mar my wood underneath. Now, your line doesn't have to be super perfect as long as we're removing the bulk of it. Sometimes your blade gets away from you, but that's okay. Now that I've got that, I can take this and then remove. This area will not have any decal on it. Once you rub it, if it does roll over into an area you don't want it, you can take your fingernail and scratch it or just at the edge of your blade and like chick, 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 and it works wonders. It's so much better than the first time I attempted it. It's a little tedious and prep work wise, but it makes the whole rubbing and removal process that much quicker. Okay, now that you have all your negative spaces cut away, now you can just rub, 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 and then peel off. But now you won't get a bunch of decal where you don't want and then have to spend two hours cleaning it up. A little, you know, 15 minute prep saves so much time. And 
after doing four already, I'm getting pretty wizard-like at cutting these negative spaces out. So the more you do it, the faster you get. So let me rub this on and then I'll kind of show you like if there's any jacked up parts, but for the most part, it's pretty smooth sailing from here. Okay, now that you've got your transfer all on, do you just kind of go and look and see, like I can tell like right here, it's kind of curving over the top a little bit. So I can take my fingernail and just kind of run it along that edge. Anything that's a little bit too far into the crevices that my fingernail can't reach, I'll go ahead and take my blade and just like gently remove any of the little pieces that shouldn't be where they are. And then I move on to my next section, matching up the pattern as best I can. So yeah, it's moving right along with decals. Oh my goodness, I have finally finished all of the decal work. So whole bottom's done. I added some decal to where the two handles go up at the top glass doors. And I added more decals to the back. So it kind of fills up the space a little more. It's taken me quite some time, but I'm done. Yay. And I still have tons of decal left over. And it's one of those things where you're like, I have more decal. Let me add more here and here and here you gotta know when to stop. Cause I could have kept going. I could have put way more decals everywhere and then just turned it into a decal monstrosity, but I stopped myself and I think it looks quite good. So let me show you. So here we have the bottom drawers, which I love. And then right here where my handles or knobs will go to open the doors and then you can kind of see through a little bit into the back. Let me show you, voila. Now, I was getting like spiderweb vibes, but the purposeful gaps like here, here, and down the center, I was like, maybe I should fill in more decals. But because the way the doors are built, they'd be wasted because you wouldn't see them anyways. So I left well enough alone and this is the inside back done. So we've got one more element that I'm going to add before we can start waxing and protecting this piece of furniture. And that is my metallic luster. This is a wax metallic finish and I got it in champagne ice. When Katja does this, she adds it to her knobs, her hardware, and then she also adds it to like some edging and she just rubs it on with her finger. She does have a glove when she does it, but basically the gist of it, I mean, I didn't read the directions, but it does say add an elegant gilded finish to home decor, mixed media, scrapbooking, and craft projects. We're supposed to apply to surface with a soft cloth or sponge, buff to a brilliant sheen. Yeah. I'm very excited, but I'm also very nervous at the same time because it's like, it's looking pretty good. Let's just finish this shit up. But I do want to add this because Katja does it and it really looks really good. I just don't know exactly where to put it. Maybe I'll do along the bottom. I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about it. So I've opened it up and it looks like this. I am fearing it might be a little too light, but I think for starters, I'm gonna put it along this rolled edge here. I mean, again, we're gonna put it in a little spot. If we don't like it, we'll just rub it off and paint over the top of it again. It's kind of like a putty. Let's see what we think. <laughs> Hold on, don't judge it yet. Don't judge it yet. It might be a little bit too whitish. Hmm, it's kind of cool. I guess we won't really know until I get it all done, will we? All right, well, let's just do this rolled it. I mean, it's on, it's on right away, so. Hmm, um, I don't know. So I do like the accent of it, and I also do have the brown wax that I can age it up a little bit. So I say I'm gonna keep going. I gotta go with it at this point, so I'm going with it. Okay, I'm not a huge fan, so I'm gonna try to dull it down with the brown wax. I just tested it over in this corner and it didn't look like it did much, but let's just give it a shot here and see. I don't know what I'm hoping for, but I'm not a huge fan of this champagne wax. 
Did I just ruin the china cabinet I've been spending like three weekends on? Possibly. Yeah, the brown is not doling it down at all. I mean, it is what it is at this point. So let me finish putting the brown on and then, I don't know, we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm really not a fan of this. I'm not. I don't know why I picked champagne. I should have picked copper, but I even put some on the knob to see if the knob ties it in. And I just don't like it. I think it's too whitish. I want it to be more like brownish. I'm just not a fan. I don't like it. It's too bright. I need it to be more moody, moody. Putting the brown over it didn't do anything. I've also probably ruined a knob. Ay, 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 ay. We were in the home stretch. Oh, dang it. I can't blame Tatcha. She always uses gold. I didn't want to use gold. I should have gotten copper. That's my bad. I don't know. Just, okay, I'm sorry. See the picture or see the shimmer? on this, it does not look nearly as white as this does. And this is all I had to go by. I don't like it. I don't think I can just like paint over wax. Will paint even stick to this? Maybe, but I'm telling you right now, I don't like that. I'm gonna have to try to fix it. Okay, so I just lightly sanded it um, to kind of get it kind of off, but it's still kind of on. I didn't want to go sand crazy because I did go a little bit crazy in like some of the corners and I got down to the actual like china cabinet wood. So now what I'm thinking is, will my brown stain make a difference now? Or not stain, wax. I mean, it's definitely brown. It says special dark. It's not special dark enough, but it did take down some of that brightness and now I don't mind it as bad. I definitely like it more. And then that means I can kind of sand off what I did to this handle and do the same. Yeah, I think we're okay. I think we Yay! saved it. See, just a little bit of sandpaper, a little troubleshooting, and then you can fix any mistake. It's fine. Okay, so now that I'm happy with this, the question is, do I do this on the bottom and the top or do I just leave it right here? My gut says just leave it. Just leave this like this. I think that's fun. So now my problem with this brown wax is, in my mind, it's not brown enough and I wanted to use it to add some antiquing around my decals, but I don't know if it's gonna do the job. What Katja does when she's ready to wax and protect her furniture, she always starts with a clear before she puts on a black or a brown because she says that allows her darker wax to move around and she can manipulate it more. But I'm feeling like this brown wax is not even showing brown to me at all which means like technically I should go in with like a dry brush of paint if I wanna do that aging effect. Or I could just say, forget it, this is what it is. I love when she does the aging process. But you are supposed to go over your decals to protect them. I wonder what happens if I use the wax brush. I'm gonna just go right in. I prefer applying it with the brush because it seems faster to me. And then I think the wax will kind of like get into the cracks and crevices more. So yeah, I guess in reality, I'm just gonna wax this puppy up for protection using my brown wax that doesn't really look all that brown. But maybe once dry, it will give it sort of like a, you know, a little bit of a haze, a little aged haze maybe. All right, I'm just gonna wax it. Do the knobs, we'll call it done. I mean, I feel like I have enough aging as far as like the layers of paint and the layers of paint and the layers of paint. And I do have the aging in the corners with the burgundy and it does bring out all of the colors. It makes everything like a little bit more vibrant. And the decals, obviously you can see I'm going right over them. The wax is gonna protect them as well as the paint. Instead of spraying this with like a varnish or a clear coat or whatever, I prefer wax. When we did the side hustle experiment, I waxed all of those pieces of furniture and I kept one for myself as an end table and I love the wax finish on it. It's divine. I'm not mad at it, it's just not what I was hoping for, but it's still pretty, it's still nice. It's saving me a step, so that's good. Yeah, I like it. I think I'm just gonna go wax the whole thing, so. Yay! And now that 
I keep looking at this, I don't mind it that bad. And <laughs> to be honest, I might add it to the bottom and to the top, but I also probably won't. But I do really like it. And I get to take back a thing of wax. And I bought a whole nother, I'm taking that back too. So that's $30 back in my pocket. That pretty much pays for almost all the decals, so yay. Okay, so I applied wax to every stitch of this china cabinet. I let it dry for 24 hours and I came back and I just used this microfiber towel and gave it a light like buff. It just turns it from like a mat to have a tiny little bit of a sheen. The more you buff it and buff it and buff it, the higher shine you will get, but I don't want a super high shine. So I literally just went like, over the whole thing. I also added some decal to the inside of the bottom doors. And I hate to be the one to have to tell this to you guys, but it's pretty fucking awesome. You wanna see it? Okay, here's like the final reveal with still a mess on the floor, nothing in the china cabinet, but the final-ish reveal. Dun, 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 dun. Come on, come on. You wanna see the inside? Let me show you. Ooh, look it. I haven't even put the shelves back in, but here's the inside, and then the inside of the bottom. So cute. Now, these were the plates that went behind the knobs. I didn't realize when I did this that this plate was supposed to go here. Well, that would cover up all my work. So I opted not to put them back on. I didn't realize I wasn't gonna put them back on, so therefore I didn't fill these holes, but you know what? We're gonna call that character. I seriously cannot get over how amazing this looks. Even with our little, you know, trials and tribulations with the metallic champagne wax, I came up with a pretty good solution to fix that and I think it looks really great. And I did the same thing on the knob, so it kind of ties it all in. I'm just over the moon about this. And thanks to Katja's technique of just like slapping on the paint, the whole painting process did not take long at all because I wasn't trying to be meticulous about it. The decals, the upper one especially, took me a little bit of time to figure out. However, once I figured it out and I had the right tool to rub it on, it went so smoothly. And I mean, it looks like I hand painted it. And if anybody asks, I did hand paint it. So yeah. I was trying to remember how much I purchased this for originally a couple years back. I feel like it was like 80 or 100 bucks. But the price of the piece does not matter. If you have an old piece of furniture that needs a refresh or you find something at the thrift store or on the side of the road or on Facebook Marketplace or whatever and you want to give it a glow up, I'm telling you. And okay, so I know I did buy like a lot of extra chalk paint, but I mean, if we just kind of round it up, this one was 547, this one I think was 999. So let's say three of these, so that's 30 bucks. This is 35. The wax I already had, but I did buy this wax for another 10, so that's 45. The gilding stuff, let's just say that was another five, so 50 bucks. And then I wanna say I spent 30 on the decals. So I transformed this one. I mean, do you remember what it looked like? Do you remember what it looked like? Let me refresh your memory just in case you forgot. So for 70 to 100 bucks, I glammed this up and now I never want to get rid of it. When it was sitting here before, I was like, I don't know if I really like it. I bought it like on a whim because I needed some place to house my china and I was thinking maybe I resell it, maybe I give it away, maybe I find something different. Not anymore, not anymore. I'm gonna hand this piece down. I was gonna say generations, ge it's only Davis is my only generation. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be around for a long time. I love it. And the wax protection, ooh, 
Mwah. You can do this, you guys. You can do this. And it's not like, you know, the TikTok DIY drama where I'm like, here, you can do this, but really don't do it because then you'd be copying me. I want you in all of my DIYs, I want you to copy me. Get out the paint, get out the paint brushes, maybe a jigsaw, whatever it is. If you see a project that I do and you think you can do it too, which you should know you can do it. If I can do it, if I can do it, if I could watch a Katja video and her furniture turns out amazing and then I can also turn out a piece of furniture using her techniques that turned out amazing, you can use those same techniques and get something amazing too. So please do it. Copy me. That's what, that's what we're all here for. Sharing ideas, sharing techniques so that we can all get amazing things like this for cheap because we did it ourselves. So do it. No TikTok drama. Do this. And if you do do it, you better let me know that you did it in the comments below. And also, oh gosh, you should email me a picture because I wanna see what you guys do. And huh, I'm nervous, but excited at the same time. Like, I don't know if Katja's ever gonna watch this video, but if she does, if she likes it, oh my gosh, it's kind of almost like one of those, don't meet your heroes. Not that she's my hero, I just really admire the work that she does. And it would super suck if it turned out like the movie Julia versus Julia or whatever, that movie where Julia made all the Julia Child recipes and then Julia Child like said her blog was shit. That would break my heart. If Katya doesn't like it and she ends up watching this, I hope she just keeps it to herself. But if she does watch this and she does like it, I hope she tells me that she likes it because really, I wish I could be her when it comes to furniture refinishing and I, I think I nailed it, but you know, I kind of like her stamp of approval. You guys let me know in the comments below if you think I nailed it, because I kind of think I nailed it. I kind of think I'm amazing. You could get the same feeling of amazingness if you did something like this. So do it. I'm just telling you, do it. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so that you are alerted to all of the Real Life Friday videos I push out, which is every other Friday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends, especially if your friend is Katja. Share this with her. And as always, thanks for hanging out.